this film. The advancements of visual effects, I mean, they're amazing. There are things that we could never have done on the first movie. This movie has visual effects that are just mind-blowing. The crazy goal on this movie is that we want our digital dinosaurs to be so convincingly real that people think they must be animatronics. David Vickery and everyone at ILM did an incredible job. Jurassic World Dominion is bigger than any other Jurassic film before. We had more dinosaurs than ever. 40 different hero species of dinosaurs, and then we create all sorts of variations. There were close to 1,500 shots, which all required visual effects work. There were huge numbers of environments that had to be made. It was a big undertaking. Well, ILM, they want to be ghosts. They, they don't want you to know they're there. The less you could think about the fact that this is a visual effects sequence, the more successful the visual effects sequence actually is. One of the main things that we wanted to see is just more naturalistic animal behavior. Animals don't always look you right in the eye. They'll get distracted. They'll see something and start chewing on it. We really wanted to bring that back in so it didn't feel like they were always posing for the camera. We brought back the T-Rex, obviously um, the iconic dinosaur from the whole Jurassic franchise. As the films have gone on over the years, she's had slight adjustments at each film, and we realized that she looked quite different from the very original film. So we went about what I'm calling digital archaeology, and we restored the original model from the 90s that ILM had created for Jurassic Park. And then we used all of the reference we could find of Stan Winston's animatronic, and we used that to match the textures and the lighting and try to get as faithful a recreation as we could. We really wanted to go back to Jurassic Park, back to the first film. It was just a beautiful process to be able to kind of take models from 1992 and get them into our software that we use today. The character of this is what was so impressive to us. Like, as soon as we did this, like we immediately started to see just like how much meaner the original design was. The thing that's impressed me the most as the technology has advanced over the years is the way you're seeing muscle move beneath skin. So you're seeing the hide react to the muscle beneath it and the bone beneath that, and it's because they're reverse engineered in a way. Traditionally, the idea of firing muscles was created by hand often. It's quite a time-consuming process. What we wanted to do was make it a lot more reproducible. So we came up with this idea. We grew the muscles and expanded them to fit the void between the outer skin and the skeleton inside. And that created perfect geometry for us that was always reproducible. Since the very first press tour, I've always had people like, um, excuse me, but dinosaurs had feathers. And I'm like, well, maybe some of them did. And they're like, uh, no, I think they did. We finally get to see dinosaurs with feathers in this movie, which is something I know fans have been dynasty for a long time. But if we're gonna do it, we gotta do it right. The Therizinosaurus is one of my favorite creatures in the franchise, actually. It's such a bizarre looking animal. It's about seven meters tall, and it has meter long claws on the ends of each hand. We started the rigging process very early on by trying to identify some of the characteristics of theropods, things like the hands facing inwards. Previously, lots of dinosaurs have been seen kind of like this, but the hands facing inwards is definitely a kind of shout to their later evolution into birds. A feather is a very complicated natural phenomenon. We developed a brand new system to create the feathers, to give the artists the tools that they needed to be able to creatively iterate. The feather generator itself can generate many different styles. Uh, we've got downy feathers, flight feathers, body feathers. You've got the crest feathers that might be a little bit more flamboyant. We have the ability to control things like clumping. A very clumped feather can look like a very wet one. The pyroraptor is freaky, really, really scary, and pretty spectacular. There was a line in the script which was like the biggest visual effects gauntlet had been thrown down. The pyroraptor emerges from this frozen lake. And I think it put the fear into every single one of us because it was such an amazing challenge. Water's always challenging. Feathers are always challenging. Wet feathers in water are very challenging indeed. 
we had really nice depth in those plates. The Anim team did a brilliant job really playing into that depth, losing him into the back of the water, into the depth haze, particularly when it's swimming at the camera. We actually 3D printed a buck of the Pyroraptor and placed it on set on the ice lake and actually fired it out of the ice lake. OK, guys, stand by to shoot. So we had this wonderful slow motion explosion of water as the Pyroraptor emerged. It looks awesome and it looks scary. When you see these beautiful creatures in the movies, when you see these visual effects, clearly the artists who create them are really thinking about what those creatures are feeling. And that's what the best artists do. There's an empathy with their visual effect. And they put themselves into the body of that creature and imagine what that creature is feeling and dealing with. And that's what you see in the animation. And that's the stuff that I think really brought it to life.